All right, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. We're live again. No, we're not live. We're recorded. But this, uh, this. <laughs> you almost had it, man. Uh, you you know, I mean, you are almost there. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we do whatever we want. Restart. It's a podcast. <laughs> we're not restarting. We're just going. All right, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. Uh, this week, Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Air Gun Depot. Air Guns can. And Caldwell Shooting Innovation to find accuracy anywhere. Gun Talk yeah. Nation this week. I'm just going to get, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put I'm on the VO voice. Yes. yes, you just do that. I worked be good. in radio for a short time. But I'm sitting here looking at our guest. and I know, I, they're here. They're, they're here. They're here. So we've got uh, in studio with us, Abby Casey. Say ha- hi, Abby. What's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> and we also have Travis, both from Air Gun Depot. Welcome in. Thank you so much for having us. Yep. So air guns, we were talking about air guns and where do you start with air guns? I I, mean, you know where I start? I start probably where every single one of us, we had red rider. It was a red, I had a red rider and I had, you know, I think it was a crossman. It was the old, like, it looked like a 1911 and you just cock to cock it. You pull back on the the, uh, (laughs) slide and that was it. I had the, the poor man's version of the red rider. That was like, it was lever action deal. Yeah. It didn't even have a forend. It was just metal. You just gripped yeah. it and it was, you could mostly hit stuff at 10 feet sometimes, but it was Well, compared to what awesome. that is now, we have spaceships. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Modern stuff is way different. You don't have to pump it uh, 16 times and see if you can see, get it, it to the turtle in the pond. Yeah, it was, <laughs> see, what we did was where we were kind of country folk and so <laughs> we're, we're, we're past tense. You mean is country folk? Is country folk. We, is country we, are, folk. we are is country folk. But we would have BB gun wars. And See, which is, is the dumbest thing a parent could let a child All right. do. The air gun depot people are gonna have an aneurysm when you yes. start talking about this. Safety it's dumb. first. We don't recommend that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't don't do shoot right. air guns but, at each other. But what always we, wear eye protection. Yes. Let's but this get the was back, out of the way. This was back in the eighties. Oklahoma. This was back in the eighties. And it all ended when I caught one right below the eye. Uh-huh. And I was like, wait, this is dangerous. Is that your answer for everything? But it was back in the eighties. Yeah. It was fine. It's like after 1990, everything's not allowed anymore. That's exactly. True. That's, That's true. right. That's true. Well, being that, you know, my dad being Tom Gresham, we were not allowed to point guns at anyone at all, but I did have an air gun range in the hallway of our house. When I was growing up, a legit air gun range, <laughs> I closed the back door. I had I made a, a backstop with a big box filled with newspaper. You and have to I, call range cold. Yeah, well, range absolutely, hot. absolutely. It was ten meters from my room at the end of the hallway to the the backstop door, and uh, I'd yell, "Range is hot!" and I'd start shooting. <laughs> that means and don't had, walk out. I had the one of those. You, I think I could pump it maybe three times before it would go through the box. Ooh. So oh about a three pumps and, you, you know, I'd go shoot, you know, it's been 20, 30, 40 minutes shooting and then range is cold. And then my sister could come out of her room. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. And, and to have parents that were totally fine with that, which was yeah. pretty cool. My range was outside and my brother. <laughs> yeah. I also did neighbors. a lean to. I also did a lean to with a piece of uh, oh, four yeah. by eight plywood yeah. lean to it. What about you guys? But, How'd you guys get started? Uh, well, I started shooting 10 meter air competition in like high school okay. with the Olympic style where you're in the suits and everything yep. and then shot NCAA and then picked up small board as well and still continue to, to do that. And now recently in the past two years, two to three years, I found out about these things, I know. which is crazy because I've been in the air gun world doing the 10 meter stuff since I was like 14, 13 and then just now finding out about the high power stuff. So that is just crazy. I lived in that world for so long and never even knew about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're just they're just completely different worlds. Yeah. And then I, Travis, I don't know how long. He has like eight brothers, so he had a well, lot of time to practice. Brother. I've got four brothers. <laughs> you just four, a large amount, but not an abnormal They all look amount. the exact same, though. That's why I think there's eight of them. <laughs> they're quadruplets. He probably had epic BB gun wars. <laughs> Could have. Did you? Yeah. No comment on that. Nope. Yes. Nope. It's my pre- HR is watching. Is. HR is watching. But pre nineties. You're safe. This is the eighties. Yeah, but this gives us an opportunity to say how stupid we were. It's a bad idea. Don't and do that. We can provide a safety message to the generations that are here now. Yes. 
Don't like, do that. Don't do that. Seriously. That's dumb. Nice, it really nice is. Nice PR spin there. Don't, don't get him started did? on Roman candles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Oklahoma. I'm going silent. I see, that's why, you know, I try not to have Oklahoma people on this show, but he keeps showing up. I keep showing up. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, so Air Gun Depot, you guys have the cool stuff. I mean, and I think that's why we wanted to talk about the early air gun days for a lot of us as being kids. It's where we all start. But these days, air guns today... I don't, there's they're nothing, so much. They're more. nothing like the air guns that we knew as Never. kids. Yeah. Well, look what's on the table. I mean, just look at like, I mean, we're sitting here staring at a fully automatic DPMS. Full auto. Full no, auto. Let's say that a, a few times. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> what BB? It's twelve hundred. Fourteen hundred shots per yeah. minute. Shots per yeah. minute. Cyclic rate of fire. That's like twice as what a real M4 You can't is. load that. That's stupid. Fast. So yeah, uh, that's the things people don't know about air guns. Now you get you can get full auto. You can get suppressors like, look at this can. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is all a can right here. Well, and, I mean, and, and along those lines, and, and you can get that stuff, and it's not class three. Exactly. Yep. And, like it's, yeah, it's you don't have to pay available. taxes on the suppressor stuff, and you don't have to wait nine months. You can get it right at your door. <laughs> I, I was going to say, <laughs> ship to the door, yeah. Yeah. And that's not like some stupid advertising thing that we're saying. Like you can't get a shit right yeah. to your door. Yeah. Well, and take cow. that. Take that ATF. <laughs> and I think. And I think. Shh, don't tell. Them. You know. Yeah. I think your your air guns can is a great motto. I think. Yeah. I think that's a great slogan to use because you know used to we we're talking about how many how much air you can pump into a gun to get it through a cardboard box, <laughs> but they're producing air guns now. Yeah. That are taking down Cape Buffalo. That sounds like, made up. I mean, but maybe Travis, can you guys elaborate on this on the no, hunting that's side? Absolutely true. In fact, one of the guys we're working with just took a, an American bison. Yeah, he uh, with an air was gun. in a place in Texas, and he, he killed it with he killed a bison with a Texan 457. I think so. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly sure which caliber it was, but um, took down a, a, a bison. bison. It's just nuts. I mean, think how thick that skin is on that animal. Yeah. And that's that's what, kind of what blows my mind and about the, this because I started out like hunting like rabbits with BB guns, right. and now people are hunting American bison. They're hunting those Cape buffalo, which I mean, if you've ever like watched anything on Cape buffalo, I mean that the hide is thick. I'm and not. They are mean. I'm not sure I'm that brave. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it I can better be have. Done. Hey, I, one of my uh, pH is better be outfitted with something bigger, but <laughs> these guys don't need that. Yeah, that's how it's actually working. That's how effective these things are. So, I mean, hunting with air guns, people may go to hear this and say, but what are the regs on it? I mean, I know, and that's something that's been changing over the last several years. Where are we at with regulations for hunting with air guns? So there's, so there's almost 20 states in which you can hunt big game with air guns. So... You know, almost every state has some small game, you know, uh, species that you can shoot, but 20 of them, almost 20 have big game ones. So you can shoot, uh, like in Utah, it's kind of a funny one where it's got to be a, a big boar that's shooting an arrow. Okay. Right? So we've got some guns that you put the arrow down, actually the barrel right. ends, yeah. you know, like in a 50 cal or 45 cal, and it shoots it faster than any crossbow. I mean, it's more powerful than than yeah. virtually any crossbow on the market. Yeah, talk I mean, this this is an audience that loves ballistics. So talk about the ballistics of those, I don't know what you call them, arrow guns. They're, yeah. Yeah, so we're, you know, some of them are putting out, you know, uh, you know, 500 feet per second with, uh, you know, with like a 400 grain, or, you know, you know, three or 400 grain arrow. I mean, um, you're just getting in, yeah. incredible penetration. I mean, it's capable of taking any, a big game animal on the planet, virtually. Yeah, I mean, you if, know, you could, legal. if you could do it with an archery thing, you could actually you absolutely take the animal with that. Right? Oh yeah. Well, and there. And, and more states are and more states are coming on board too. Like I know my home state in Georgia. Last year they they passed a law where you can hunt with their guns now, like the Texan. Right. But the legislators they really don't know how to categorize it still. And then they put if they put a limit on it, so this year it goes away. So I think they're trying to gauge the popularity of it to see gotcha. if there was an interest or any. They just don't know how to categorize it. So that's a big pushback on this industry. Interesting. But it's gaining more traction. So if someone's listening and this is either their interest or they're wanting to do more of this, 
probably they should reach out to their state agencies to say, hey, I want you to, to approve this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the Air Gun Sporting Association, ASA, is really influential in working with the legislation. You know, they know what they need to present. And so if you're interested in getting your state doing that, then reach out to them and they'll tell you how to go about it, put you in contact with people. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I know our audience likes to get involved in that stuff and support causes and, and you know, get more gun-friendly, hunting-friendly legislation passed through. So, okay, ASA, you can reach out and, and maybe either donate or, or donate your time or whatever to try to get some things done in your state. One of the best, so I'm, I'm totally switching gears here. I'm going back to story time. 180. I'm, because I don't know if you guys have had a chance, but you guys have to go shoot iguanas with air guns. Uh, oh, yeah. That yes. is possible. It's on the list. Oh, my gosh. That is possibly the most fun I've ever that it was so you guys fun. Did that, it, right? Yeah. Yes, that definitely tops shooting like having BB gun wars. <laughs> Absolutely, hundred one hundred percent. I don't know if that's much of a much of endorsement. It's better than being shot with a BB gun. Yeah. Thanks. Great. With only like, where did you do that at? We were down in Puerto Rico. Went down to Puerto Rico. Um, we we went down there. We brought a couple PCP. So. For those new to air guns, pre-charged pneumatic <laughs> uh, is you, what we're I've talking about here. Down. Yeah. You sound so educated. I know. You know your acronyms. I know. I just we weren't on PCP. We were shooting yeah, shoot, PCP yeah. air guns. Yeah. We were and, on uh, pina coladas. <laughs> on, on pina coladas. You were half the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we, I think, in two days of hunting iguana, uh, is it iguanas or iguana? Iguana. Iguana. Yeah. <laughs> we shot probably a hundred. In two yeah. days. Oh, wow. It was incredible. And it's it's very much to me like squirrel hunting. Right. You look up in the trees and you try to find them. You try to find them. And a lot of times you'll only see a small eye. And I think that's one of the reasons why maybe an air gun hunt with kids would be the best way to introduce them to hunting and air guns. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of trigger time, a lot of targets. Yeah. I mean, what else do you need? But you do have to be accurate. What we, we discovered and our guides told us, he says, basically, you need to shoot them right behind the eye and uh, or it won't work. Or they won't they won't fall out of the tree. Not, absolutely. Not. And, you you know, you could be a couple inches off and hit them you know, in the neck or something like that. And they weren't impressed. And that's that's mm -hmm. another thing with these air guns. And I know, you know, Abby, you guys as experience with them. They are highly accurate. Oh, yeah. So you, we were talking about this the other day, Abby. So this gun in front of you, the Texan. Tell us about what it is and what it's capable of, because I was impressed. Well, this one has a carbon fiber tank and shoots about about 800 feet pounds per shot. Is that that's about right? Yeah, you can get the Texan in, in a few different variations. This one's kind of the smaller version. It's got the shorter barrel and with the suppressor on it. And uh, and it's you know you can get it with aluminum tank or the carbon fiber tank. But, you know, at the, at the higher range, you're getting about 800, like you say, 800 foot pounds of energy. Wow. Uh, you know, I mean, which is like 357 Magnum range, right? Right. Oh, yeah. And, uh, or more. They're really accurate, though. So which caliber were we shooting at RMAC? Uh, that 45. The, 457. The 457. And we had steel plate targets for the competition out to 300 yards. Okay. 300 with yards? Gun. Yeah. With so an air really, really far out. <laughs> now... If you're hunting, I, me personally, unless you really know the gun that you have, I would feel comfortable shooting something at 100 yards or less just well, because you're losing so much energy right. out that far. Right, absolutely. At 300 right. yards. But what's really weird, and I remember uh, shooting an air gun a few years back that um, when they were, we were just kind of starting to get into those big bore hunting style guns, and it was a 357 uh, bullet. And it was actually a bullet made by Nosler. So I mean, this is a legit really? bullet company, <laughs> right? And you, they tell you all about it, and it's, and it's going like 1,000 feet per second, and it's got this much energy, and you're like, okay, okay. And then you sit down at the bench, and you go, Psh. You're like, wait, you're like, wait what, did that happen? Did, did, it, did it go did off? Did it go off? <laughs> my, gun's, my gun's broken. Right, Yeah. because you just told me about how powerful it is. Your hand goes and, up. And nothing happened. <laughs> you're like, no, something happened. You keep, wham, and it hits the steel, going, okay, this is that, different. Yeah. It's a way different. Yeah. That's another cool thing about these things. Like if you're on a range and there's not any high power shooters, I would be completely comfortable shooting this without any ear protection. And you can have a casual conversation with your buddy if you have. Right. You, if I you mean, have versus having earmuffs on. 
No, you say? if you have friends, right? If, if you have, have any friends. friends. If you have friends. I mean, some of, yeah. Most of the Gun Talk Nation listeners are very, uh, you know, lone wolf kind of yes, uh, folks. No, absolutely. <laughs> now, Ryan, I'm gonna we're we're gonna take a quick pause. I'm gonna have Ryan pay some. Uh, oh, we gotta we're pay the bills. We're gonna make the chatter here. All right, yeah. paying the bills. All right, Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Airgun Depot, your source for airgun deals, new product releases, and reviews into the world of BB guns, pellet guns, and airsoft guns. Air guns offer shooters more trigger time without uh, without any of the usual obstacles like space, time, or money. Amazingly accurate. We just talked about that. Enough power to take down big game. We just talked we about talked that. We talked about that. We're Air checking guns the boxes. Are quiet. That's true. <laughs> Inexpensive, easy, and fun. Find out what air guns can do at airgundepot.com or just listen to this episode. Um, also, <laughs> uh, lockdown. Easy monitoring of your personal gun safe, hotel room safe, toolbox, storage unit, luggage, and more is an option with the lockdown puck. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection to receive notifications from the puck on your phone about an open door, any detected motion, and even temperature and humidity readings Secure what matters most with the Lockdown Puck. Visit LockdownPuck.com to learn more or pre-order your puck today. Got to do it. Get puck. Got to do it. All right. So thank you, guys. Um, so what's next for air guns? I mean, what's kind of the hot thing right now? Well, the matches, I think, are becoming more popular, like RMAC. They got a 20 grand prize this year what? for first place. Whoa. $20,000? Yeah, 20,000 Gs, Yeah. Jeez. Crazy, huh? <laughs> so those are becoming more popular. It's interesting to see those competitions going on. And then the hunting is becoming bigger, um, yep. especially whitetails and hogs. That's like the two main things that people see, or I see people shooting is with these air guns is whitetails and hogs. Well, let's go back so. to the $20,000. Yeah. When and where is this yes. happening? <laughs> Well, I'm not going to tell you guys because you're liable to show up and outshoot one of us. We're liable to show up and make a fool of ourselves. That's probably what's really going to happen. You know what's like embarrassing about that is Abby Casey has seen me shoot, and she still said that statement. <laughs> that so, I would outshoot her. She's very sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, she's a professional kind. media person. <laughs> She knows what that's, she's that's doing here. That's how she gets you. Uh -huh. That's how she gets you. She lulls you into a false yeah. sense of security uh -huh. and then just kills yeah, you. Yeah, she's like... Yeah, you remember the whole thing I was talking about, a shooting jacket and competition collegiate yeah, yeah, shooter exactly. thing? Exactly, see? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just play for, for, let's just a little bit. Play for a little <laughs> money. Let's make it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> How big is yeah, your pocketbook? Yeah, that's out here in Utah, and I don't know, when's the date? Yeah, so it's, you know, the, the second week in June. Okay. Here in Utah, and the, I mean, shooters come from all over the world. I mean, it's uh, really competitive and just shows off the accuracy that air guns uh, have. It's Are there multiple great. events with it? Uh -huh. Yeah. There's like a speed shoot. You have the extreme, is it extreme interest? That's a hundred yards. Okay. And there's a, what is there? There's that 300 yard long range shooting, big bore thing. Is there anything else? Yeah. There's a, and then there's like a PRS style. Oh, wow. Style shoot. That's awesome. That's cool. Well, you know, it's interesting because air gun competition, I mean, air guns have been in the Olympics for decades and decades. And frankly, I mean, shooting is, I think the, as far as the number of events, shooting is the third biggest event in the Olympics. And it, the air guns being shot, I think are the most accurate guns being shot at the Olympics. The, the, the group size that they're shooting is just incredible. Yeah, it's pretty tiny. It's smaller than the X-ring at the 10 meter uh, air rifle event is smaller than a pinhead. That's unreal. Smaller than a pinhead. <laughs> yeah. Think about that. Um, going back to air gun depot, um, you guys, you guys obviously offer a bunch of products and, and cool stuff like that. But one of the coolest things that I think is on the website is actually what's called the vault, um, which kind of can tell you about how to get involved. Like it, it's so got it's educational content. stuff. It's all, it's all content. Tell us what would people find on there? So we'll take, um, you know, we'll write articles just like on ballistics, on the ballistics of pellets versus slugs and that sort of thing. We'll do uh, definitive guides on a gun, you know, break it down. This is what you're going to get. This is how you want to tune it. You know, these are the uh, projectiles that it shoots the best. Um, you know, general articles on shooting techniques and so forth. So okay. all sorts of stuff in there. Videos. Yeah, there's a lot of information. And I know for a lot of people, getting into this is scarier than actually, you know, actually doing it. Because they think, oh, man, I got to have an air tank and... Right. I got to figure out this air gun. I don't know why it, it intimidates people so much, but I've seen it happen. But once they get it in their hands and start operating it and they figure it out, they're like, okay. It's a second nature <laughs> type deal. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, you mentioned air tanks and I kind of breezed past the whole PCP thing, but maybe explain to people about precharged pneumatic and what it is, what it's capable of. So precharged pneumatic means that you fill up a tank on the gun. So this here is the air tank. It's on this gun, it's the stock and the air tank. A lot of times they're up in front, but you fill it up usually to like 3000 PSI or, or could be more. And that's, that's kind of the hang up is because you can't just use your shock compressor or something to fill it up. Gotcha. You need like a scuba tank or, a, or something like that. You can that. go to a dive shop or you can go to a fire station or there are little compressors even. You can hook up to your car battery. Yeah. Oh, really? And fill it up that way too. So there's lots of option, options. You just got to get set up with it. But the PSI is too high for just a regular bike pump air compressor or something like that. Yeah. Okay. You'd be out there all long. <laughs> <laughs> There are there are hand pumps. There are they have hand pumps for it. We both there had to do it. Pumps, but if, <laughs> if you want a lot of exercise, that's that's the way to go. All right, that may be a prank we play on someone, right? Yes. Oh just, yeah. You just need to fill up this tank. <laughs> here's the, here's yeah. here's your Schwinn tank and fill your Schwinn <laughs> bike pump. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> We're gonna go shoot some iguana. <laughs> We're not even a quarter of the way done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. And a lot of people, I think, too, uh, have the wrong mindset about it. Oh, I'm not going to pay that much for a high-powered quality air gun. But you just got to look at it as it's a different way of shooting, just like muzzleloader, just like archery. Right. You know, we're not trying to replace firearms. Right. Right. This well, is what it is. It's just a different style and a different option. And well, that, here's the oh, – well, Go for it, Travis. Say, you know, like, as you talk about, these are not – this isn't a Daisy Red Rider kind of thing, although yeah. Daisy Red Rider is still super fun. I mean, when you're talking about the high tech air guns, they're high tech. So, I mean, they're not going to be the same price as a low tech spring run, you know, air gun, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you're looking at a gun that uh, is going to, you know, you can put 10, 10 rounds in an inch at 100 yards, right? Right. It's time after time after time. And it's quiet. And you you literally are going to shoot it ten times more than any other gun because you can shoot it in your backyard. You can you don't have to go you know find a dedicated range. You know, it's, depending it's on where you live. Shoot. That's cheaper to shoot. The ammo is cheaper that's too. A good point. Way cheaper. Yeah, all the expense with an air gun is up front. Okay, right? you that's buy a good way to put it. Five hundred rounds for you know five hundred pellets for for twenty bucks or fifteen bucks. Right, that's and a good way to put it. it. Yeah, I mean, I love and the stuff that we have here is a little bit more geared towards training, or at least for us, the way I think about it, it's more training. So we've got a DPMS uh, M4 style. Uh, SBR, um, yeah. SBR. Yeah. Um, we've got a SIG P365 BB gun, which looks exactly, feels exactly and I think like that's, a SIG. That's one of the more important and the points. That's one of the more important points about the guns that we have in front of us is that they are so close to the actual firearms that a guy carrying a 365 is going to have that same fit, that same feel. I mean, down to the grip texture. I mean, I think that's what's important for these guys is they yep. can now run at their house like Abby was talking about. Yeah, and they fit your holster, you know. And we were talking about kind of getting more training in, more trigger time, dry fire. But really, I think this is kind of next step of dry fire yeah. is, okay, I could do this in my garage, in my backyard. I mean, what do you guys hear from your customers on the way they're using their air guns? And what's, uh, what are some of the stories from those folks? So a lot of times people buy them for a certain purpose, right? Okay. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm thinking of getting a 365, for example, uh, but I'm going to buy the BB gun first and, and try it out and huh. see, you yeah. know, does this fit? Does it, you know, how does it feel? And you pay a hundred bucks and if you don't like it, you've still got a fun little BB gun to shoot. Sure. Makes um, sense. If you do like it, then you've got a trainer that you can use afterwards, right? And you can do the mag changes. You can do the, you know, all your drills and so forth. And it has the same blowback too. Yeah, right. I mean, a right. lot of the slide a lot of them have blowback, sure. so you've got to reacquire your sight picture. It's never quite like a, right? You know, nine millimeter blowback, right? But something that's different in the ear gun world are the optics, because um, I know um, I know about it, but maybe you guys explain how are air gun optics different or I know that some, depending on the gun, they'll go, oh, I'll just throw my uh, whatever rifle optic on it. And sometimes that doesn't work. Yeah, the, the times when it doesn't work is, um, you know, with spring guns like brake barrels, they're murder on scopes. 
Like you can take your gun, you can take your scope off, off your 50 BMG and put it on your spring gun and it just destroys it <laughs> because it's got a different direction. It's got two direction recoil. Right. Scopes, a lot of scopes aren't built for that. But on PCPs like this, you don't really have that problem. The only thing you need to watch out for is the parallax because okay. a lot of, you know, center fire scopes or, you know, fixed parallax at, at 150 yards or something. And with air guns, you want to be able to dial the parallax down to, you know, 10 or 20, 30 yards. Gotcha. That's otherwise there's there's a lot of crossover. Okay. You know, outside okay. of those two things. So yeah, you can't you can't put your regular uh, night force KJ on Never. your on your brake barrel. It'll that would be cr- why would it you will do kill that? the scope? Who would do that? Well, you well, think, I mean, well, you think oh it's snare gun. There's like there's no recoil. But but I want to I want to know the guy who's putting a night force scope on. <laughs> you know I who bet is that you, guy? <laughs> it seems like a real crazy idea, but I bet you guys hear stories, right? Oh yeah. Well, I mean on on the on the PCPs, people are putting night force. You know Schmidt and Bender, they're putting all. You know, yeah. but they can do that on you those. Can do it on a PCP. But they can do it on a PCP. Yeah. They're not doing that on brake barrels. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the guy who does that has way too much money. Yeah, you're <laughs> not, not going to see sense. cheap scopes yeah. at these matches either. At the big competitions, you're going to see high dollar scopes, just like yeah. any other sure. large match. Sure. Now, are guys able to custom? How do they customize these guns? Because that's what we do. We like get a gun, and then we're like, "Ooh, how can we make it better?" Yeah. Which <laughs> I'm slowly finding out that uh, <laughs> how it comes from the factory is how it was intended to be designed and he's, shot. He's testing this theory. Yes. Right um, now. So, I mean, how are guys? I mean, are they? Are they? What? What do are they? Do? Yeah, what are they do? Definitely are. Yeah, I mean, you you know, dropping them into different stocks like the Texans, so forth. There's different stocks made. You, you can drop it in there. You know, a lot of them have AR compatible, you know, butt stocks. Oh, sure. Ribs, All right. Uh, so you can modify that. People are switching out barrels, getting custom machine barrels to put in them. And, uh, you know, there's there's tons of ways. One of the interesting things about air guns is you don't have, you're not working up loads for them. Right. You know, kind of on a related topic. You're actually tuning the gun itself. Okay. And so you can you can get all that fine tuning and tweaking and, and, and get your uh, basically, you know, load worked out perfectly just by tuning the gun to the projectile. So adjusting how That's much air is given it. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a hammer that knocks that valve open. You can adjust that. You know, you can adjust all, you know, how much pressure of the air is going in. So yeah. Forth. A lot of them come with a power wheel too, like the Talon P, I believe, or is that the. Yeah. Or even the Texan. Here. Yeah. And, okay. you, and there's a lot of them that have really easy trigger adjustments too. Adjusting the trigger, yeah. that kind of thing, fit it to you. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, so if someone's hearing this and going, this sounds really cool. How do I find out more? How do they find out more? Well, for this specific campaign, we have some kits already set up okay. on Airgun Depot's website under Airguns Can. You'll see a big video, a little sign on the website and everything. Just click on that. And there's some kits that are already built out so you know exactly what you need. Okay. And um, Basically gives you everything you need. Yeah. The ammo, um, the tank, whatever it is, it's in that small little kit. But Tur- obviously turnkey. the website has, I don't know how many products. There's tons of options. Yeah, you yeah on just, our YouTube channel, we do reviews and go through, you know, all sorts of topics on, you know, airgundepot.com's YouTube channel. Yeah, cool. you guys go to Another the good way. go to the vault. That's where you go. That's where, that's then, where you want to go to the vault. Time. Yeah, go to the vault. Airguns can right down there down at the bottom, and you'll get to to see Abby jumping around with an airgun. Well, it's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a I funny video. I always put in the best videos. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do. You just got this way about you, right? Yeah. They want to mess, mess with you. But, <laughs> oh it, you know, gosh. it is true. Then, And I think over the last several years, the more we've done with modern air guns, we're just so impressed. Every single time we, we play with them, we, they're just so much fun. Um, they're, they're affordable. You can do a lot more than what you think you can. You know, the whole being able to suppress them, have full auto, yeah. Deliver to your door. I mean, exactly. it's just it's just so cool. Um, and I mean, I'd say that even if they weren't here, I would. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's there's it's it's a new age of hunting is what yep. we're bring, we're bringing these into. Yeah, and, and and you know, and you can win twenty grand. So get out there and start practicing. <laughs> Apparently, right. well, and the and the other thing is, you know, when you're teaching somebody to shoot, it's t- teach them on an air gun. Yeah. Right where there's no recoil, there's no sound. I mean, you can develop all the fundamentals and just get that ingrained without worrying about developing bad habits like flinches and so forth. Yeah, and that's a great point. 
it's a lot. And you get people out to shoot who might be afraid of the noise, who, who are going to shoot five or six times and be done. You put them on an air gun, then you've got somebody to shoot with all day. You know? Yeah, I wish that was how I learned. That, that's a, yeah. Don't do the here, oh. here, eight year old kid, here's a 12 gauge. No, thing. it no, was a 410. Three and a half inch shell. <laughs> yeah. Single shot 410. And yeah. I'm like, oh, gosh. But Travis, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's an awesome way to start anybody out, whether it's a kid or an adult, um, because, yeah, no, no noise, no recoil, and it's going to be super accurate. So they're going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, work your way up from there um thanks for being on with us for uh, gun talk nation guys thanks for having and us our pleasure yeah so if you want some more information go to airgundepot.com we appreciate them being on the show and uh we'll that's this back. week's gun talk yeah, nation. we'll be back next week we'll be back yeah i think so we'll see <laughs> we'll see if we get canceled <laughs> all right thanks for listening thanks for watching